Hello everybody, it's Katie, back with another episode of my vlog, and today I want to talk a little bit more about shibori techniques. I actually took a spin back through my YouTube channel recently to see what shibori tutorials I had already posted last year, and I was shocked to see that the tutorial video that I did for the Ori Nui, um, that's the teeth style of stitching, has almost 10,000 views as of today. Um, I was completely blown away by that number. It's far and away the highest viewed video that I have on my channel. Um, and it made me really happy because my channel is a little bit all over the place. Um, and you know, YouTube experts will say that's a problem that you should find your niche and then stick in it. Um, and I do acknowledge that being um, kind of my life vlog and just talking about all the different aspects of my life means that People who've tuned in for Goblin Co. and Dungeon Degenerates updates might change the channel when they see it's a Shibori video. People who've tuned in for Shibori videos might change the channel when they see it's a Cinema Club movie reviews. Um, you know, maybe you're only here for Stroke Dimension updates. Um, I get it, you know, my vlog is kind of a mixed bag and so I've got a mixed audience and not everybody is here for everything. But that said, out of all the videos that I make, um, the ones that make me the happiest are the ones where I get to share um, shibori and dyeing and sewing tutorials with you guys because it's the thing I like to do the most and I love doing it and I love sharing that knowledge with other people and hopefully inspiring other people to get excited about trying some of these techniques um, because I just wanna spread the love of fiber arts and shibori and dyeing and all of this stuff. So uh, that said, clearly I need to do some more shibori tutorial videos and I'm going to be working on those. Um, they do take a little bit longer than this style of vlog just because there's kind of multiple parts that have to go in to making those. Um, I also realized the reason I haven't done a shibori video since last summer is I haven't actually done um, that much dying since last summer when um, all of that activity was being fueled by everyone wanting to buy uh, hand-dyed masks from me. And so I had to really crank up my shibori practice just to keep up with demand on those masks. And that's when I was making those tutorial videos. So um, now I need to actually make the time to make this, the shibori tutorial videos outside of there being a demand for some of my shibori work. Um, but like I said, I'm excited to do that. So I'm definitely going to be doing that in the near future. Um, but in the meantime, uh, just to acknowledge the folks who are here for the Shibori info, um, I do have some other cool Shibori ideas, um, techniques, um, uh, different materials you can use, uh, stuff like that, that I just kind of want to put out there and share with you guys. Um, again, hoping to inspire you to maybe think a little bit differently about your approach or what you could do with this medium. Um, and I'm super excited to share. So let's take a look. All right, you guys, uh, switched to tabletop mode here just so I could lay things out and you could really see them. Um, this is kind of an interesting one that I came up with last year. I'm not actually totally happy with this, but I am inspired by it. Um, I'm calling this one a plaid, even though it's not a proper plaid design. Um, but the way I made this one, um, which maybe you can guess if you've been following along with my Shibori tutorial videos, is I folded the fabric. Um, these wide, light colored stripes were folded together. Um, and then I ironed it uh, along the pleat line and stitched it down. So I folded this three times this way and stitched each of those down. And then I folded it five times going this way and stitched all those down. So when I was done with this one and it was ready to go in the dye bath, it was a much smaller um, kind of weird floppy little rectangle of fabric. Um, and then as uh, with all of these dyeing practices, anywhere where the fabric remains white is where the fabric couldn't really see the dye, you know, come in contact with the dye. So that's the part that was folded to the inside um, and then kind of pinched in place by the stitching that I did. Um, so like I said, I'm not super happy with this particular piece, but what I am excited about is the technique. So I'm definitely planning on doing some more of this technique uh, this year. I'm definitely planning on making the folds on the first go round narrower. I don't really 
really like how wide these are. But what I do like is this weird kind of, I don't know if you can see this sort of floating three-dimensional effect it almost has. It kind of, um, it, it's like an optical illusion where it looks like this stripe and this stripe are sitting on top of the rest of the fabric because of this sort of darker shadow line created here. So I'm excited about that and about experimenting more with this particular technique um, in the near future. So um, I, again, I guess we'll call that a plaid, even though it's not really, um, or maybe just, uh, well, I was gonna say folded and stitched, but that's kind of what all the stitched designs are. So I um, thought that one was pretty cool. And then uh, I have another one that a lot of people really liked when I showed a photo of this one. Um, you guys, if you've watched my other tutorial videos, can probably guess how I did this one. But what I did was I drew zigzag lines on with a washout marker, and then I went through with one long piece of thread and I just stitched a running stitch down each of those lines, turning at the corners until I got to the end. I stitched all of the lines on the piece of fabric before I started pulling the threads uh, tight so that the fabric bunched up and of course, again, the stitch line is where the bunching happens. The bunching is where the fabric gets so pinched and folded together that it can't really see the dye when it's in the bath. And so then that's the part that remains white. So of course you can choose any shape here. You could do straight lines, you could do curved lines. You can even um, make a picture with this technique. I follow several um, Shibori artists on Instagram who are really amazing and they do these cool stitched pictures of flowers and birds um, and they blow my mind daily. So, um, so that's another idea. You can really go crazy with the stitched line um, and then just again, gathering it together along that line of stitching it pinches up and pinches up and pinches up, um, and you just keep going with that, and then that's the part that stays white while everything else gets dyed. And as usual, I'm super interested in these kind of intersections, the places where the white um, and the blue meet up together, and the really interesting things that happen in that kind of space right at the edge of the stitching. Um, I just love it. So there's another idea for you guys. Um, and speaking of other ideas, there's also other dyes besides indigo. Almost all of my work is done in indigo, but um, I have messed with some other dyes. Uh, so this is called Alkanet. It produced this very, very light gray. Um, it's super subtle, but I really like it a lot. I just did that on a standard cotton bandana that is a uh, one big spider web. Um, I did do a tutorial on the spider web binding technique, but just as a reminder, um, it's just, uh, you make kind of a point in the middle. I'll pick this one up and show you guys. And less sloppy than what I just did. You make uh, your pleats be arranged down the length of the fabric, and then you wrap it around with um, thread to get that shape, and then that's what goes in the dye bath. So the corners are always the darkest part on those, which again, with the Alkanet is not that dark, but I wanted to give you guys some other ideas besides just the uh, traditional indigo that I use. Um, this one, another subtle guy, uh, was dyed with onion skins. So I really like how that came out, and you can really see how that is the color of onion skins just rendered much lighter. Um, I could have made a more, um, dense dye bath for this and gotten a darker color, but I really like that uh, super light color. You can actually see through the fabric. The, the next one behind it is peeking through a little, but hopefully you can get the idea. And that's another big uh, Kumo spiderweb design on that one. Um, this one, I used Matter Root to get this awesome pink color, which I really love. Um, and this one was also you know, pinched into that same shape as I did the spiderweb binding, but instead of having a thread going all around, it's just three rubber bands and you get that target shape, which um, I think I shared in my very first Shibori tutorial. So look that video up on my channel if you're curious as to how to get this shape. Um, but yeah, Matter Root makes a really interesting um, warm red color that I really like a lot. Um, there's lots of other natural dyes. There's lots of commercially available dyes. Um, so again, you can use these shibori techniques with almost any dye. 
um, you know, as long as you've got the right combination of uh, fiber and dye that works with that fiber. This is all on cotton, everything that I'm showing you. Almost everything I dye is on cotton. Um, so make sure if you're experimenting with different dyes, you're using a dye that will work on cotton because not all dyes work on all fabrics. Um, so speaking of that, you can also go the other way with your shibori. And instead of dyeing this fabric, I actually bleached it. So this piece of fabric was red when I started and I bound it up. Again, these are the Kumo spider webs that I love so much. Um, and I decided, okay, let me try bleaching the fabric instead and see what happens. And I think you will agree, the results are pretty cool. I actually have not cut this piece of fabric up um, because I love it so much and I can't even figure out what I would do with it. But uh, clearly I need to do some more bleach shibori experiments um, just to mess around with it because I think the technique is so cool. Um, and you get these really unexpected results. But again, uh, bleach works the opposite of dye. So bleach is removing color from the fabric instead of adding color. So you can see where these were, you know, pinched into that shape. And then uh, in this case, the darkest parts are the parts that were kind of folded into the inside when I made the shape. And the lightest parts are the parts that were the most exposed to bleach. And again, the darkest parts are the parts that were kind of hidden inside and didn't get touched by the bleach. Um, I will say, if you're gonna mess around with bleaching uh, fabric, you do need to learn how to stop bleach from working. Um, there's several different techniques you can use. I like to use the uh, hydrogen peroxide technique. If you look up online, there's a bunch of different tutorials, but basically the deal is when you bleach fabric, um, the bleach works as long as the fabric's in the bleach, then you rinse it out and dry it. But if you don't neutralize the bleach or stop the bleach by using some other agent, again, I use hydrogen peroxide, um, the bleach will continue to be in the fabric and then the next time you wash it, the fabric might get lighter and it might fall apart because it does stress the fabric out quite a bit to bleach it. You know, you're removing color from the fiber and that does weaken the fibers. So um, it's super, super important with bleach, again, to neutralize the bleach when you get it to the tone that you want it to be at. Otherwise you will have a, a piece that's just gonna fall apart. I have learned this one the hard way, definitely. Um, the other really cool thing about bleach is the way it breaks the dye um, in the fabric apart. And sometimes you get expected results, right? This is a red piece of fabric, you bleach it, it turns pink, right? Okay, that's, that's an expected result. But other times you get other results. So I uh, reproduced the same technique here on some smaller pieces of other color fabric. And I just thought it was very cool, the results that I got from that. So here we have something that used to be purple when I first started. This one actually started out green. You can still see these tiny little, I don't know if you guys can see those tiny little pinpricks of green right up at the top of the circle right there. That's the color that that fabric actually started out as. Um, this one started as yellow and boy, did it just disappear. Like you really can't even see the spider web on that one anymore. Um, this one started as orange and this one also started as red. I think it was the same color red fabric as I used on this one. And as you can see, this one turned out lighter. This one came out darker. Um, I think this one was in the bleach for longer. So, um, but I am just fascinated by how these colors can break apart and produce unexpected colors. Um, you know, these ones bleached all the way to white, but only on these parts. And they didn't bleach all the way to white out here at the corners, which is where you would expect them to, because that's, again, the part that is the most exposed to the bleach. Um, these ones didn't turn up with any white in them at all. They just turned lighter versions of the color of the fabric. Um, and sometimes, like I said with this one, it was green and it lightened up to this beautiful turquoise color, but it was totally a surprise. I expected a light green, not something going all the way into blue like this. Um, and depending on what fiber you're using and what dye has been used on that fiber, when you bleach things, you can really get a, a wild spectrum of colors can sometimes come out in the mix when you bleach it um, because 
that's just the component colors that that particular color of dye is made out of. So out of these four, I would have to say this one is my favorite. It's probably the most interesting out of all of them. Um, but I love all of them. They kind of remind me of uh, Tibetan prayer flags in the current state. I've thought about making some kind of a rainbow quilt out of them at some point, but um, obviously haven't yet. I dyed these several years ago and they've just been sitting around in my hoard of fabric um, waiting for the right project to come along uh, and it hasn't yet. So, um, but uh, there you go. I just wanted to throw out some other ideas about shibori techniques and, uh, you know, again, maybe inspire you guys. Maybe you want to try this bleach technique. Um, there, It's really fun to play, right? Uh, experiment around, try different things, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, have some fun with it. And in the meantime, I'm going to make a few more shibori tutorials and I will get those posted up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned to this channel if you're interested in learning more about my shibori techniques. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back in a few more days with the Cinema Club Sunday Roundup. Till then, take care.